All right, so today we are starting from the most related statement of cash flows. So let's go through some notes which I will just share with you. Uh, cash flow is just cash flow. There is nothing which is very serious about it. Those somewhere there are written intermediate level. AFRA. AFRA is not in intermediate, it's only in advance. So we were not intermediate. That is not an issue to us. Uh, so the objective of IS number seven is to require the presentation of information about the historical changes in cash and cash equivalents of an entity by means of the statement of cash flows. So cash flow is divided into three activities. I hope you can recall because I know you're not doing cash flow for the first time. So cash flow is divided into operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, those three. So our operating activities are the main revenue generating activities, i.e. sales, cost of sales, administrative, and selling and distribution. It also includes cash received from customers and cash paid to suppliers and employees. That is operating activities, what we normally carry out on a daily basis. You pay employees, you pay suppliers, you also receive from customers, you also make sales, then you need to adjust the cost of sales, the normal administrative. So those day-to-day -day operations, we normally take them for operating activities. So any cash, any cash inflow or outflow in relation to our operations, we classify them as operating cash inflow or cash outflow. Then we have investing activities. Investing activities are the acquisition and disposal of long-term assets and other investments that are not considered to be cash equivalents. So investing, we normally concentrate on cash received or cash paid to acquire or on disposal of long-term assets. So any moment we are presenting cash flow under investing, we concentrate on non-current assets. That is your main area of concentration. Financing activities are activities that alters the equity capital and borrowing structure of an entity. So when you issue shares, you acquire loan, you pay the loan, you pay dividends, all those items which relate to the capital structure of an entity, we normally take them under financing. So operations is the sales, cost of sales, and mean customers, suppliers, and the rest. Investing is all about non-current assets, acquisition and disposal of non-current assets. While financing is all about the alteration of the capital structure, that is, uh, loan acquisition, loan repayment, issue of shares, dividends, all that. Note, interest and dividends received and paid may be classified as operating, investing, or financing cash flows, provided that they are classified consistently from period to period. So there is normally a big question when it comes to interest and dividends. There is an argument, some people normally argue, that I pay interest because I have a running loan. Every day, I get a loan to, to, to manage the daily operations. So to them, they feel that interest should be part of operating activities. Some people say that I've received interest from my investments because if you invest, you get the returns. So they will capture the interest and I invest in. Some people say we are paying interest because we have long-term loan. So they will take it to um, financing activities. So you find you find uh, you will you will find in different scenarios people classifying interest and dividends in any of those three. So for exam purposes, the examiner will not have any problem with a student having captured interest and dividends in any of those three. In reality, down there at work now, provided uh, you have chosen to classify them under financing or investing, you should be consistent in that application. Once you start classifying interest as part of operations, that 
classification should continue in the uh, future. Customers arising from taxes or income are normally classified as operating unless they can specifically be identified with investing and financing activities. So taxation, any cash outflow on taxes normally goes to operating activities. So methods for presentation, we have indirect, we don't want to be an individual, indirect method and we have the direct method. So what is indirect method? It adjusts the net profit before tax for effects of non-cash transactions such as depreciation, impairment, etc. It also takes into consideration the working capital, the current assets and current liabilities into account. So when using the indirect method, you start with the profit before tax, then you adjust. You adjust for non-cash expenses like depreciation, impairment, among others. So a cash flow format where you adjust the net profit before tax, that one is the direct method of presentation. Direct method, it shows each major class of gross cash receipts and gross cash payments, including cash receipts from customers and cash payment to suppliers and employees. The main limitation of direct method is that it fails to take into consideration the working capital components. For operating cash flow, the direct method of presentation is encouraged, but the indirect method is acceptable. All of them are just okay. But for example, number one, so I've started giving now uh, directions. In this class, don't say that uh, you like the indirect method or direct. Examiner, mostly they dictate the method they want you to use. In exam, they, they will tell you to solve using either direct or indirect. So you have to know how to apply the tool. But if the question is open without them saying the method you're supposed to use, I will encourage you to use the indirect method. But I'll show you how to apply the two methods so that you can be okay. So under a direct method of presentation, we have the format. So you start with the profit before tax, then you add back, add back depreciation, amortization, impairment, loss on disposal of PPE, gain on disposal of subsidiary you should subtract, investment income should be subtracted, finance cost should be added back, share of profit after tax. So under adjustment, what happens? Check this. Uh, we start with profits before taxation. So under adjustment, you know, for you to arrive at profit before tax, it means all expenses have been subtracted. So the, the only expense remaining is tax. Then you are done with the I'll say you are done with PRL. So there are some expenses which were subtracted before profit before tax, but they are not operating expenses. Operating expenses are the expenses you will incur on daily basis. And there are only three. This one says post of sales, administrative, selling and what? Selling and distribution. Those are the only operating expenses. The expenses you will incur for operations. So you find that these people, they have subtracted some expenses before profit, before tax, but they are not operating expenses. So in exam, any expense you find was subtracted before profit, before tax, and it is not part of this, you add them back. Because they are understating your operations, but they are not operating expenses. So even if you don't know what kind of an expense is that, provided it is not this three, that one must be added back. So I hope that is clear. I, number two, Number two, neo two, yeah, number two, income. There are some income which are normally added before PBT. They add them up there, but they are not operating income. So what is an operating income? Operating income is the income which you generate on daily operations. The one we allow is only one. They say, or in this question, I know there will be. So the revenue is what we'll say is the operating income. Any form of income 
in whichever way, which was added before this profit you subtract. It is not part of operating income. So the operations are these four. Cost of sales are mean, distribution, and the revenue itself. So anything which is lying in the profit account before here, which is not part of this four, if it was added, you subtract. If it was subtracted, you add back. That is why things like investment income, you are seeing us subtracting them. Yes, we acknowledge that they are income, but the question is, do you receive them on daily basis? Of course, no. So investment income, that's most one of profit from other share. Are they operating income? No. So we subtract them out. Things like loss on disposal. When you sell an asset, then you find that maybe you have lost. Loss on disposal, we agree, is an expense. But that is not an operating expense. So you are back. When you gain on disposal, when you gain on disposal, that is not an operating income. It's not an income which we generate on daily operations. You subtract it from operations. I hope you have seen it clear. So, Kena Kwaswali, Kakwasao. Working capital. So, you bring the working capital. Working capital is just, uh, you just check current assets and current liabilities. And what you bring is either increase or decrease. If what increase or decrease in uh, current assets. And the current assets, not all of them. Uh, current assets, we only concentrate on inventory, receivables, receivables, repayments, repayments, payables, payables, and accruals. Only these ones here. Yeah. Those are the items you normally check for the working capital. Don't bring cash, don't bring bank, don't bring short-term investments. Don't bring bank overdraft. I'll tell you later where we take those four. The short-term investments, cash, bank, and bank overdraft. Those are not working capital components. Those are called cash and cash equivalents. So we don't bring them in the working capital components. So working capital, I would not want you to concentrate here. Mostly, though not always, the ones which are always there is inventory, receivables, and payables. These prepayments and accruals once in a while. So those are the items you need to check as far as uh, working capital components are concerned. Then we have investing activities, cash received on disposal of PPE, cash paid to acquire PPE, you subtract because it is cash outflow, cash received on disposal of a subsidiary you earn, Cash paid to acquire subsidiary, you subtract. Investment income, to little or you, but now we bring it as cash flow on investing. So investment income is subtracted from operations, but added to investing activities. Then we have financing activities, cash received on issue of new ordinary shares, dividends paid to non-controlling interest, holding company, finance post paid, that is the interest, loan acquisitions, loan repayments, then you get cash flow from financing. The net cash flow, A plus B plus C, so A is the operating, investing and financing, you add them together, get the net cash flow, then you add cash and cash equivalents at the beginning, then you get cash and cash equivalents at the end. So what are cash and cash equivalents? Cash and cash equivalents represent cash itself, Bank and any highly liquid investment. Okay, of course, you know, investment, mutual familiar investment without any further explanation. Investment should be should be long term. Should be long term. So in the question, if you find investment appearing under current assets, under current, then that is cash equivalent. It means it's highly liquid. It's an investment which can be disposed of can be sold anytime. So if you find any current, current, uh, any current investment that is cash and cash equivalent, then bank overdraft, bank OD, which is treated as negative cash equivalent. So when checking for cash and cash equivalent at this stage, 
mostly in section one and section three, when I'm a chunk of space, the cash people and the butter cash and ban a couple of current assets. So it doesn't become a big issue. Because you know, this is always our balancing figure out there. But at this stage, before we conclude, you have to check whether you have all these four. Then you you aggregate them before you post. I, there is the direct method. So direct method, operating activities. So you don't start with the profit before tax. Cash received from customers, cash paid to employees. You subtract, then you get cash generated from operations, less tax, then you get cash from operating activities. So when applying the direct, you just check how much you receive from customers, how much did you pay employees and all suppliers. You know, the employees, the customers uh, and suppliers, you subtract and that is it. Note, investing and financing activities are similar in both approaches. So there is no, whichever method you apply, uh, investing and financing activities remains the same. There is no distinction between the two. So they only differ in operating activities. Indirect starts with the, starts with the profit before tax, while direct you go straight to cash received or paid by tax. I don't think if there is something we should back from checking an illustration. However, there is something I need to tell you and which is very critical. Cash flow, um, cash flow in CPA, CPA we agree cash flow in three levels. There is in the foundation section one, there is cash flow. So that is in a normal cash flow normal just a normal cash flow for a limited company or even sole trader or any. So in section one, we just do a normal cash flow. In section three, we do cash flow on published financial statements. In section five, the cash flow which is here is cash flow where a subsidiary was either disposed during the year or the subsidiary was acquired. Those are, you expect either or both both in a project once in a while, equal or United, bringing where there is acquisition and disposal at the same time. But once you understand one, at least it's in the level. So at this level, you prepare for cash flow on acquisition or cash flow on disposal. Get that clear. Not normal cash flow. It is cash flow whereby during the financial, during there is a subsidiary which was acquired. So you need to adjust for that acquisition in the presentation. Or during the year, there's a subsidiary which was disposed of. So you present cash flow when there's a and to factor, to factor for that disposal of the subsidiary. So that is what you need to know at this advanced level. We are expecting, in fact, we cash flow in the of the in Amanda once in a while. 99% chances it should always be there. So you should know you are expecting cash flow for acquisition or cash flow on is possible. Why do we not go to a question? Get out your first paper. Get out your first papers. Oh, last sitting there was cash flow. Yeah, as usual. I can see last sitting. Yeah. last sitting. to finance while current, you know, But you can take a picture. Yes. Yeah, I like doing checking the current ones so that we can see the new thinking of examiner. And also it makes me to be very attentive. See, why is that a book of So open last sitting, last sitting, August. Yes, August.
So August 2023. Question number five. So let's read the question. Let's go through the question for the poll. So it says, the question says, the following financial statements led to Kulima Group. So consolidated statement of financial position as a target September 2022. So most of the cash flow is comparative. So we have 2022 and 2021. As you guys is capable of seeing there, we cannot treat those items one by one. Perfect. Then uh, consolidated statement of profit or loss. Also, you are capable of seeing there. We cannot waste time checking one by one. Additional information. Kwa hiyo kakazi ya kasi ya binakuwa kukubwa isi kushitwe. Na waka kubwa sana. Kubwa. You know this has been compressed, but just have confidence. So, machinery. Machinery with a carrying amount of 12 million. Carrying amount is the book value. Net book value. Or 12 million was disposed of for cash proceeds of shillings 10 million. So they lost. So they, the book value was 12, then they sold it for 10. So kindly just master, we have we have loss on disposal. Loss on disposal of how much? Two million. Yes. Depreciation of shillings 52 million had been charged to operating expenses in the statement of profit or loss. As a result of revaluation of Kulima to factories during the year, a transfer was made within equity for excess depreciation of shillings 1 million. Included in trade and other payables of the reporting date is 2 million. That is 2021. Wait a minute, what is this? Okay. 
that relates to property plan and equipment purchased during the year. Connected. Ukulima received a government grant of 3 million in cash during the reporting period to help fund the acquisition of machinery needed for its production process. Ukulima Group accounts for grants as a reduction to the cost of sales. Of course, okay, fine. Ukulima Group accounted for investment properties at fair value. Some new investment properties were acquired at a cash price of 14 million during the year. Ukulima Group disposed of, and I like that one. So this question was on disposal. This was on disposal. Ukulima Group disposed of its share held in Shama Limited. Ukulima held 90% of the shares in Shama Limited before disposal and 40% of the shares after disposal, leaving it with significant influence. Oh, so they had 90%, but they disposed of 40%. Eh? Leaving it with significant influence means they were left with 50% joint venture. I hope that's what they're saying. The Ukulima Group received cash proceeds from sale. Okay. The profit on disposal of 3 million was correctly calculated and credited to the statement of profit or loss. Okay. The fair value of the interest retained in Chama Limited was 32 million, so the remaining investment. Goodwill and that controlling interest at the date of, of disposal date were 40 million and 4 million, respectively. A breakdown of Chama Limited's net assets as at the date of the shares disposal is provided below. So the property plant and equipment is one and all those other items. So the net assets at the disposal date was 34 million. So net assets on disposal was 34. During the period, shilling 6 million in cash was spent, was spent on investment in associates, fine. Finance costs include two million loss on the trans retranslation of a loan that was denominated in a foreign currency. It's only for one million. All other finance costs were paid in cash. Right? issue. Required a consolidated statement of cash flow using the indirect, underline indirect, using the indirect method for the Ukulima group for the year that started September 2022 in accordance with the IS number seven statement of cash flow, 20 months. He has made a letter to be on bill. He has a lot of money in the minis, he has a lot of But the Salas approach is being the first question, then that people are calling, but at the level. So in a year, we will even do. Let's just use one for now. Shillings is millions.
Ah, yeah. So I hope we are set. I hope we are much set. So in direct method, we start with profit before tax. No. Usiende kwa mtiani usahau sasa ilikuwa ka after ama before. Ukienda after your past operation. Operation is within. So you give us here. Mwisho tena tu pole pole. Profit. Profit before. Before tax. So go to the profit account which was provided by the examiner there. Go to the profit account and check how much was profit before tax. That should be a free tip to everyone. Ni ni kazi ya macho tu. Kuna kikubwa. How much are you seeing? Profit before taxation. Thank you. Uh, people are seeing eighty-eight. Uh, that is J. J. Nagona and J. Are you seeing eighty-eight? Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody sees eighty-eight there. Allow me to check as well. Profit before tax. Profit before tax. Yes, it is eighty-eight. So you only take already. You shall like. You already make a tick. So that is 88. That is 88. Back up. And remember this one is just 10 times 2. So if you 10 ticks, correct, you have the 20. So already, already to measure like a gap. Like 2, remaining 18. Like, yes, if you look at 10, what are you going to measure? So you have to measure. Uh, in uh, cash flow, once you write profit before tax, you go to adjustments. So right there, adjustments, adjustments. So once you write adjustments, the first adjustment, whichever cash flow in this world, any cash flow you will ever come across, the first adjustment is always distribution. The first adjustment is always on depreciation. So, no. so can you check the notes where we can be able to get depreciation? I'll say that on a bill. Not once. No. Check not one, please. Check additional information number one. Machinery with a carrying amount of 12 was disposed of for 10. Depreciation of 52 million had been charged to operating south. So bring depreciation 52. So that one is add back. So add back 52. Then once you capture depreciation, depreciation of one another sister. When your sister and depreciation later? Eh? Okay. Amortization or impairment. So, no. so immediately you capture depreciation, always think of impairment. Immediately. So come here and say impairment loss, impairment loss, impairment loss. So impairment, I've never seen them giving students that impairment, but we can always be able to get it. You get it by reconciling goodwill accounts, goodwill. So allow me to have the first working, to have the first working, goodwill, so say here, so call it working one, goodwill, goodwill. So you get impairment by reconciling Goodwill account by consigning goodwill account. Good, so we can start. Go to non current assets and check for me how much was goodwill at the start of the year? How much was the value of goodwill? Non current assets. Okay. At the beginning of the year? Huh? 142. I hope everyone sees that. I can also see that. It was 142. 
So balance goes down. I'm not using tier account. When we started the year, the outstanding goodwill, which you can see there, was 1.2. As we were progressing, we disposed of a subsidiary. We disposed of a subsidiary. So it means the goodwill, which was in that subsidiary, was that what? Sold. So you less, you less, you less goodwill, goodwill than what? Goodwill disposed. We disposed a subsidiary. So definitely we disposed it with goodwill. So I think this was mentioned. Disposal was mentioned. I want you to check note four. So I'm going to wait until you tell me that figure. How much are you seeing in note four as disposed goodwill? The figure. Just go through note four. Correct, 40. Have you seen the 40? The, no, the, the amount of goodwill on the date of disposal. The very last bit of not four. Mm. Sure. So on the date of disposal, the goodwill which was there was 40. So this one was sold. You subtract. You subtract it out. Beyond. I thought. So it means the closing goodwill, you see, we started with 142. We sold a subsidiary, and the subsidiary was having a goodwill of 40. So it means the closing, our expected closing, will be uh, 102. The closing should be 102. Skip one line. Skip one line. Check if it tallies, if it is in agreement with the closing, then there is no impairment. So how much is the closing as per the examiner? Hmm? Yeah. 75. So according to the examiner, other than current assets, the closing goodwill is 75. So it ought, according to, we have applied everything they are saying, we should have closed with one or two. Why did they close with 75? There is impairment. So that decrease in goodwill is impairment. So you come here and say impairment, impairment, loss, the BF, BF is the balance in figure, the decrease, the decrease in value of goodwill. How much is that? 107. Huh? So that decrease is impairment. I hope that is clear. So you come here and say impairment loss, working one. Working one, we got 27. Even that one you add back, it is not an operating expense. Now, so we just add it back. Yeah, for sure. Very good. I listen to this. Nataka mukishike flow the dinaenda. Tunanda na PBT depreciation impairment. Check if there is any non-current asset which was disposed. If yes, you check whether it was disposed at a loss or at a gain. Loss you add back. Gain you subtract because gain is not an operating expense. So it was there. We let you. No, there was. Loss on disposal in note number which one? One. The machinery had a carrying amount of 12 and we received 10. So that is loss. We come here and say loss on disposal. Loss on disposal PPE. So that is 12 minus 10. We lost two. So that two also you add back. You add back the two. And there is something about 
investment properties list. Yeah, man, check for me not three, please. Check for me not number three. They said Ukuliva Group accounted for investment properties at fair value. Some new investment properties were acquired at a cash price of 14 million during the year. How much was the investment properties at the start? Go to non current assets. Go to non current assets. And non current assets, investment property, you are seeing how much? Um, 60. You are seeing 60. No. Mm. 60. Then they acquired, they acquired another one at what price? 14. So 60 plus 14? 74. They closed with how much? They closed, they closed with 82. So that is an increase of 8. Sure. Yeah, they closed with 8. So you are 60. They started with 60. Then they topped up how much? 14. So it means the closing was supposed to be how much? 74. But with them, they have closed with 82. 82 minus 74? 8. Eight. So they are saying they were holding it at fair value. You know that increase would have been very challenging to us. Did they acquire or what could have happened? But you see, they're saying they held at fair value. So it means the fair value that did what? Increased. So that is again, there is the gain on investment properties. So right here, gain, gain on investment, gain on investment properties, gain on investment properties, that is 82 minus 60 plus 14. We started with 60, we topped up 14. But it increased to 82. So this is a gain of 8. But that one you subtract. It is not an operating what? Income. So no. mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not an operating income. So you have to subtract it out. Aye. Aye, aye. We are moving. Eh? Now, I've shown you what to do. You start with profit before tax. Add back depreciation and the sister impairment. Go to assets, non current, check acquisition or disposal of those assets. Gain or loss, that is, gain or loss on disposal of assets. Investment properties in the Kuja to Akobat, most of Nangalianga disposal of the non current assets. Once you are done with the impairment, depreciation, impairment, loss, and gain, go back. Let me use the casual, casual English. Go back, you no, know, take your eyes. You're your casual, right? Take your eyes to where there is somewhere we have revenue and we have PBT in the profit account. So I want you to place your eyes here in this space, upper. I want you to place your eyes there. So, so we want to check, we want to check items which are appearing between this space, between revenue and PPT, which were not part of operations. Operations that they were getting up for revenue itself, cost of sales, admin, selling and what? Distribution. Anything which was captured here, which is not part of those four, yours is to check whether it was added, you subtract. If it was subtracted, you do what? You add. You don't even struggle. So let's start from, you can start from whichever, from PBT going up or from revenue coming down. Let's start from revenue coming down. We start from revenue to Kita So to Kianzia revenue, Joe, to Kianzia revenue, revenue tick, you don't interfere with that. That is part of operations. Cost of sales tick, that is part of operations. Operating expenses tick to you under the operation itself. Share of profit in associates. Is that operating income? No. No. You subtract. So you come here and say share, share of profit, share of profit in associates. Isn't the Nakwanga one of 
It's not part of operations. So I'm seeing, it is 21. Yeah. It's okay. So mm -hmm. remove that one. Next, downwards, profit on disposal of shares and subsidiary three. Tall. That is not an operating income. So profit on disposal. On disposal subsidiary. So they get three, that three is not an operating income. So that one also you subtract. Very good. Now what's again? Profit or finance cost. Finance cost is not an operating, it's not an operating expense. Look, hard work, finance cost. Finance cost, they are subtracted how much? 12. You add back. So you add back the 12. Very good. After that, profit before tax to make it up. So you don't go past there. Who's the term of Jinda Apple? Who the woman for Sarah? The woman for Sarah. Who the pick up? Back a PBT. Who can another PBT? You stop there. Don't check anything below PBT. You just do that PBT. So we are done with adjustment. Imagine that is how we do adjustment. So just know how to do the adjustment. PBT, depreciation and the system, loss or gain on disposal of assets, go back to the profit account, revenue and PBT, check for non operations. If it was added, subtract. If it was subtracted, question. That is how we normally do adjustments. So kindly, kindly, uh, what you have gotten here, can you add? Add from 88. Add from 88. So people normally call it cash, cash flow before working capital changes. People are getting 149, Joy, Hilda, and the rest. So this is cash flow. Cash flow before working, working capital changes. Yes, Anna, but in South. So cash flow before working capital changes. 149 as per your answers. Positive, isn't it? Yeah. So this is positive, 149. Do you know, Sai? Do you know when you make a couple of 16 months? Who could I? I'm being very honest. I'm being very honest. Who could I 16 months? Yes, who could I? Let's go to working capital itself. So come here and tell me working capital. Working capital. So my students are aware. Working capital, we go to current assets and current liabilities. Look, checking increase or decrease. If what? I couldn't have an idea. Well, you want to see Sunday? Yeah. When you're talking about It's okay. You'll close. Yes, they are, so we have another class from six to nine in the evening. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's all my way to pull up and you go to the movie. So I know maybe we might not finish at nine sharp. See you well at some board. Man is still in the hotel, man is in a lot of issues. But I want to try with finish at least with another year's swelling. Yeah, so let's try to finish even this one only. Then what we charge, what I can do, then we meet in the evening. All right, working capital. I want us to go to current assets and current liabilities. But let's start with current assets. So, yes. 
So current asset, you are seeing, um, what are you seeing? Inventories. You are seeing inventories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are seeing inventories. So inventories, how much was there at the beginning? Sure. Beginning was two or one. So my what when I talk around, you know now when you know we should a calculator. So I, you on the other one, I'm the video. I'm capable of seeing with your online. Now I know what they are doing. So now now you know we should a calculator. Tired? No. At this level, you don't jump to calculate that. You take it to a one. Go and check the subsidiary which was disposed. Come on, you use a stock. You subtract that stock before you compare. Before you compare. Before you compare. Please, happen you want to have a fellowship for class. So it is opening. Check the one disposed you subtract is when you compare with the closing to determine increase or decrease. So the items which were disposed was captured in the last bit of note four. Property plan and equipment. Trade and other receivable, cash, loan. Oh, there's no stock, eh? Yeah. So inventory, you are lucky. You must have what was it? Because it's not a what was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, just compare direct. I'm going to keep it up for Sasa. Compare direct. It was 201, it went to 256. See the increase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right there, increase in inventory. Increase in inventory. So increase in inventory is 256 minus 201. How much is that? No, what one I do is okay, hey, one in one at one at one. No one at through Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So difference 256 and 55. So this 55, when I want a student, like any, the student does not know, do we add or we subtract? That is another big concern. So students, are we adding the 55 or we are subtracting? Because come on, subtraction, watching the exam at the point. So you have to be very sure. Gender, we subtract. What what do you think is the, the justification for that? Yes, I agree. But what do you think is, uh, the defense we give for the subtraction? Though the defense is not necessary, but let's just hear. Why do you think we subtract increase in stock? Cash outflow, exactly. You know when in, you know they're checking uh, cash flow, increase in stock means they are buying more stock. So cash is committed out. So they are spending cash, the way that is putting it, they are spending cash. To acquire stock. So make sure you are very sensitive on the, the science. Correct. Let's go to the next. The next is trade and other receivables. Yeah. Last bit of note four. There was they sold receivables worth 32. So while you use 32. User. So let's check this. The Kwanza was the increase or decrease. Una Angalia Kwanza. They started with 263. Wake up a computer or calculator. 263. 263 minus 32. That one is how? 231. Then it went to 219. So decrease. So decrease. This is decrease. Decrease in receivables. Decrease. Decrease in receivables. 219 minus in brackets. 263 minus. Right. Sorry. 262 minus 32. Minus 32. Yes. So it's the decrease of how much? You have to the decrease. 263 minus 32 is 231. Then it went down to 19. Yeah. 
it decreased. Yeah. It's a decrease of trend. So the trend is positive. When when receivables decreases, on your receiver on the debtors, debtors it means what were credit control on a kind of case. When I customers, when I leave us, no, your customers are paying. Decrease in debt means they are paying. So I hope that is clear. All right. The next one, cash and the cash equivalent, you will select it. That one will be the balancing figure of mission. So you go to payables. Yeah, go to payables and the current liabilities. And I'm not doing anything. I just want you to tell me there was increase or there was a decrease. That is what I need from you. And by how much? So if I need payables, just look for me payables. Do for me payables. You tell me increase or decrease. The way we have been doing this other one. Uh, Brian, decrease of how much? The answer will be increase or decrease. So we said the share to decrease per yeah, Of how much? You, uh, okay, I know there's something in the younger on the shit up, but that is why I'm keen on it. Uh, payables is an increase of 93. Mm -hmm. 93. Okay, there's another one we have said, brand 17, 93. There are tax, there's a tax, we're going tax, not to go for payables. How did you have a tax that go for payables? Uh huh, we would say like a plate of the only, if either of those answers are correct. Hmm? People are saying it's 93, what we 93, but allow me to confirm. When I keep the younger one, the problem, that is why I want to confirm. Uh, trade payables 55. Then they closed with 24. So that is an increase, huh? 24. 93. My partner. 
Okay, okay. Uh, however, yeah. however, you have not captured note one. Okay, mostly na kwanga hivo. Hivo when you may find a 93 kwa sawa, the way the questions are always designed, 93 kwa sawa, but for this question, can you just go to note one, yote? There is something. Na uzisepe sita mimi ni gejua aje. Kenji mekushinda, imechita kila mtu. Umana mepata the same answers. What I was checking, kuna wanafungu na semantic minus minus, because wame wana pair was kiwa negative, wame wia subtract direct. Can we check not too keenly? Tumeana yu tumi yu. Yes. So. So it will be this way. I have it as an increase. So it will go this way. Increase. Increase. In pair bonds. You see, they are saying reporting dates to Kifunga. Isn't it? To Kifunga, you gave me 524, but if you check not one, examiner is saying the reporting dates, there was 2 million, which related to property. Mamoya yeah, property, if you have not paid people you purchased property from on credit, that is not part of pair bonds. Pair bonds in accounting is payable. Which relate is credit as relating to the normal business operations, not property plan and equipment. So that one we will subtract out that related to property. No, 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 no. So you subtract that to minus opening. Opening is 486 minus the post 55. Variation, you got 93, I think it should be 91. So can you give me the difference? 91, so no. Yeah, so that one comes to 91. And increase in pebbles you earn. What does it mean? Where will you be the daily? That is the meaning. You are not paying, so, but you have the money. We assume you have money, but you are not paying. So get for me the aggregate from 149. This minus this plus this plus this. You call it cash generated from operations. So cash generated from operations. How much? One? One ninety seven. One ninety seven. One ninety seven. Have it there. One ninety seven. Then from there now you close. You close the operations. By checking the tax, you check the tax paid, and also you check the interest paid. Even so, come here and tell me tax paid, tax paid, then interest, interest paid. Those two. 
Then you are done with the operations. Tax paid and interest paid. These are the you're working. We don't have any option. So let's go to working two. Working two, I want us to check the, the taxation. I want us to have taxation accounts. So working two, taxation. I want us to check how much tax was paid. Already, and right, so we start with the balance brought down. How much was the tax at the start of the year? Tax is a liability, so go to current liabilities. The center, the the screen. So I think it, because I was a Yama, that was before the center. Is is there okay? Is that one now fine? You think Apple equals hours, Leo? Come on. Yes, thank you. So check balance brought down. Brought down in cash flow, please check both who you be keen, both the deferred and the current. Both the deferred and the current. So how much was the deferred tax at the beginning? Beginning. Are you seeing 33 somewhere? Deferred tax, yes. So at the beginning, deferred tax was 33 plus current. How much was the current tax at the beginning? Current and the current liabilities, income tax payable, 12. So 33 plus 12 is likely to be 145. So when we started the year, Tax obligation due to tax man was 45. So can you go to PL for the year? So PL, profits of loss account for the year. PL for the year. So that was the tax at the start of the year. So to carry the moment we forgot the dollar Christmas, Nasafa one, and we deliver KRA 45. You want to check which are you and Gampi? Check PL. Income tax expense. Are you seeing 19 somewhere? Are you seeing income tax of 19? Yes, what? Yes. In the PRL. Yeah. Yes. So in the PRL, there is tax of 19. Means you can need to examine our, our friend. In the same same PRL, the butter and for chimney. Are you seeing other comprehensive income? Items that will not be reclassified to profit or loss. Senior. Yeah. Then on it, there was gain on revaluation on plant, 50. Then income tax on items that will not be reclassified is how much? 10. You know, when you sell an asset which has been revalued, capital gain, CGT, the capital gain tax. I know capital gain, those are other comprehensive, but the fact remains you need to pay that tax. So tax we pay whether it is on P and L or other comprehensive. So under other comprehensive, there is income tax on items that will not be uh, will not be reclassified. So P and L, Ama OCI, other comprehensive income items. Not reclassified. OCI stands for the other comprehensive income. I've seen them giving us 
10 only. So it means, kama tukukua tumelipa tax, paka ile tulianza nayo, taxman, KRS should tell us, beginning of the year you went 45, during the year from your normal operations 19, then on other comprehensive we charge you 10. So total tax payable we should be this sum. How much? Seventy-four. So can we compare? Can we compare with the closing? If we find it is turning, closing is also seventy-four. Then it means they never pay tax. So skip one line. Balance current down. Deferred. What was what? Deferred plus current. Forty-four plus current is now twenty-three. So it is 24 plus, 44 plus 23, 67. Check to confirm. 67. Yeah, this is 67. So there is a decrease. Decrease in obligation means they paid. Because the total payable, total tax payable is 74. But they closed with a liability of 67. So the decrease means they have already paid. That is what they have paid. The balance in figure. So tax paid, the balance in figure, they paid the decrease of how much? Mm. Yes, quite that. D497. Seven. Seven. What's your question? Mm -hmm. yeah, so they paid tax of seven. Nani Akonaswali? They paid tax of seven. That is what they paid. What's up? Mm -hmm. right, so they paid seven. So just present that one here. And the current paid, they paid tax of seven. You subtract. Uh, let's go to interest paid. Let's go to interest paid. Can you check? Where do I want you to check? Check for me current liabilities if there was interest payable. If there was interest payable. I couldn't have become my years. No. There was no interest payable. But what about P and L? How much was the finance cost? Yes, finance cost we are seeing to LOs. So let me just check the additional information. If there is anything which can affect interest, if you are not keen, so P and L there is finance cost of 12. If there is nothing, then we assume 12 is what was paid. So let me just run through the notes, your view. When you come and scare interest, my Yama finance cost. Carrying amount 12 was disposed, that one is okay. Mm. Note number six. Jenga and Asama, please let's check note six. It is getting to come here by the way. The finance cost include two million loss on the retranslation of a loan. Two million loss on free translation of a loan that was denominated in a foreign currency. All other finance costs were paid in cash. You know, cash flow, hello? Cash flow is checking cash in, cash out. So they are saying the fellow includes a loss. So a loss of the cash paid. To get what was paid, check the total minus. You know, they, they were exchanging currency. Who made up bureaus are to exchange. Then, ulikwana, how many dollars? Ulikwana, $20. You exchange your 20, you incur a loss of 
two. So that two, unajua ujalipa, so ndio, there is no cash out for which you are paying. So you cannot bring it as part of interest paid. So to get the interest paid, you will take the 12 minus 2. 2 is not 6. You subtract that 2 to get the actual amount paid. So the actual amount paid, you pay 10, which still you subtract. Remember, So you call it, you call it, Cash flow from operating activities. So cash flow from operating activities. 197 minus 7, 190. 190 minus 10 should be 180. So this one should be 180. This you can call it A. Call it A, the 180. Here it goes out. All right. Let's go to investing. Investing, which is our area of concentration. Investing. Where are we going to concentrate? Because if you don't know the area of concentration, that is important. Which is our area of focus? Where are we concentrating for investing? Correct. We concentrate on non current assets. Non current assets. We just dwell there. Abu de Osuza to Toki. Uda Shikilia to non current assets. Pole, 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 pole. Bas. With that, you will just be, you will just be fine. Na kuna manaino mingi. Aina manaino mingi. So we are ready. So go to uh, balance sheets. Go to the balance sheets. You check those non-current assets. We have to deal with them one by one. Akuna kuwacha hata moja inje. All of them. So the first one is property, plant, and equipment. So for cash flow, property, plan, and equipment, you check how many things. Two, cash received on disposal and the cash paid to acquire additional PPE. So mostly, examine and akupatiaka moja of those two. Then the other one, you will get by preparing PPE account. So first of all, I would recommend you just write those two. So right here, investing, investing, activities investing activities once you write investing even the exam you write cash cash received on disposal on disposal of pp then cash pay cash pay to acquire to acquire PPE. Those two, from the experience, examiner of those two, they will always give you one. Then the other one you need to determine for yourself. Determining for yourself means you reconcile PP account. So in this question, you can remember we were given this one cash received on disposal. No. There was PP we disposed. It was disposed for how much? I think it was not one, if I'm not wrong was disposed for how much? How much did we receive when we disposed? 10 million, so no. Yeah, so 10 million is the cash inflow. So bring there 10. It was disposed for 10. That is what we received. The book value was 12, but we sold it at 10. We have capotes and bill. So bring there 10. So to get. Huh? Oh, so. so to get the cash paid to acquire, we have to prepare PP. We don't have any shortcut there. So I want us to prepare PP accounts. By preparing that, we'll take a letter to a 
So PP working. It, this tax pay was working too, right? Mm. So tax pay check working two. So working three is on property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment. So how will you determine this? Just the way we are doing reconciliation, start with opening. Then before you compare with the closing, you have to check all the notes. Anything touching on PP, revaluation, depreciation, disposal, you are just for all of them. Then you will be perfect. There we go. We start with balance brought down. So balance brought down. How much was PP at the start? Property, plant, and equipment when we started the year, you are capable of seeing 263. Yes. 263, I can see there. 263. 263. Then now I want us to go to we go to where? To the notes, the additional information. We read one by one, one by one, to check anything touching on PP before we compare. Number one, machinery with a current amount of 12 was disposed. So less disposal. So less disposal. Less disposal. You subtract the current amount, not the amount you receive. So the book value was 12. You less it out. We proceed. Depreciation of 52 has been charged. Depreciation also you need to less. Depreciation 52. That one also you have to net off. Number two. Number two. Uh, the group received a government grant. The group received a government grant of three million in cash during the reporting period to help fund the production of machinery needed for its production process. Ukulima Group accounted for grant as a reduction to the cost of sales. Uh, that one we have to adjust. We have to adjust. You know, let me just take you back to logo to IS number. IS number? 20. 20. Uh, IS number 20. On. So I'm coming back to check massive. Not one. IS number 20 on government grants. We have how many grants? Two. There is a capital grant. And there's a revenue grant. Capital grant is the one which should help you in the production of that asset or acquisition, and it should be capitalized. But here they are saying the grant was meant for production of machinery, but they have directed that we take it to post of sales. So by taking it to post of sales simply means the grant is a revenue grant. So it should not form part. <laughs> They receive, uh, sorry, cost of assets. That is, yes. So they received the grant of the three million, let me read it again. They received a government grant of three million in cash during the reporting period to help in the production of machinery needed for its production cost. Okulima Group account for grants as a reduction to the cost of assets. So it means it was utilized to, to do what? Uh, to finance that production of the asset. But now this one we cannot, we cannot, if it was meant to reduce, then it was not supposed to be capitalized. And therefore I will subtract it out as part of the cost of the asset. So massive, let me adjust this grant, then I check what one you are talking about. So the grant, they have said it was to reduce the cost, uh, the cost of assets. So you subtract that grant because they are saying it was to reduce the cost of the assets. Massive is requesting that we revisit not one, not one, 
in statement as a result of revaluation, huh? as a result of revaluation of Okulima Group's factory during the year, a transfer was made within equity for excess depreciation of one million. I don't want to transfer. I want the evaluation itself, not what they are transferring. The what they are transferring will affect maybe the retained earnings. I'll check. But so far, I just need the evaluation gain itself so that I can top up. So just hold it for now. We see what happens. All right, let's go to note number three. Ukulima Group accounted for investment properties at fair value. No, investment property is not part of a PPE. So skip that one. Just skip that one. Note four. Let's check note number four. Disposal. Note four, we disposed a subsidiary. Subsidiary, if you check, PP was disposed worth 81. So check that one. Disposed subsidiary. Where is all my good? The entire note is just talking about disposal. So just check the property plan and equipment which was there. It was 81. It was 81. So that 81. You need to subtract. But could you call it a trade payable? <laughs> there was a trade payable somewhere which was included. Not one, Vera. Yeah, so yes. The last bit of not one included in trade and other payables at the reporting date at the end of the year is two million that related to property, plant, and equipment purchased during the period. Yes, which we subtracted the other side. So you will add it here. You will have to add it. Those people we are not paid. So trade payables, trade payables, there is a balance. We are not paid of two. It relates to PPE. That one should be added back. So I think massive, what is remaining for us to check is just revaluation. But this revaluation, you know, massive what they're saying in you know, one is a transfer of one million. We want the total revaluation. Check for me. I can pinpoint it in the check P and L. I will go to profit and loss account. Then check other comprehensive income. So on other comprehensive income, I want to check for me the gain on revaluation on plant and equipment. The total. We need to check the total. Uh huh. Fifty. How much are you seeing? The total revaluation, 59. Just what's not in the balance sheet, but during the year, how much is the total revaluation? Fifty, correct. So revaluation, revaluation again. Of 50. 59 is the closing, which includes everything. We check during revaluation, we check during the year of the So that is all. I don't see anything else. You want a story? So, can you adjust all that? So they adjusted, you get how much when you adjust? 167. So people are getting 167. Can we compare this with the closing? Balance carried down. Huh? 221. Still increase. 
That is an increase. Increase means they have acquired. So cash paid to acquire. Cash paid to acquire. More PPE. That is the balancing figure. They have acquired that increase. So just give me the difference. 167 to 221. Okay. 54. So these people paid 54 to acquire additional PPE. I just hope we are accurate. Distribution plan to PCS. It's post subsidiary trade table. That's two evaluation. I think we are good. So this is working three, 54. But now if it's not paid to acquire, you subtract. Yes. So for PP, we are done. We go to the next, the next item on non current assets. The next item on non current assets. The next item which we can see is goodwill. Goodwill to the Malizana Uzo for impairment. No. So that one, forget about it. Forget about the goodwill. Forget about goodwill. We go to the next one. Investment in associates. Correct. Investment in associates. Associates is a very small company. It's a small company where we have some small investments. So what we normally check in associates is the dividends. The balancing figure in a pocket dividends received. Please note that. So let's do a working to check how much dividends. Let's check how much dividends we received from that company. So I'm working for investment in other states. I don't think we're going to be able to invest for money from another university and what they're doing. So we need to determine dividends. Even joint venture the same. We cannot joint venture like the other states for cash flow. We are always looking for dividends. But the I love this question. It's quite tricky. It has a lot of information, unlike the other questions I'm used to. So it means to get a question in here, we might not struggle that much. So how about in four investment in other shares? Investment in other shares. Investment in other shares. Aye. You start this way, balance brought down. How much is appearing on a non current asset? The opening, which you can see with your own eyes. Someone, just one person, I can see how much? 103, correct. So it is 103 at the start. When we started the year, 103. How much profits there was share of profits after tax in associates? Check P and L. So share of profits. Share of profits. P and L. Value for profit account. So check P and L. How much profit were we given? You know, we started with an investment of 103. During the year, there was Illumina Gaga post acquisition. So profits, how much did we get from associates? P and L, 21, Joy. Joy, Joy, 21, 21, 21. Yes, we got 21. So that one, 
you top up. You top up. Imagine in a conga in a shanga to a whole kunanga and a guinea. In a quarter you that plus that, then you compare. But this question had at something. Which which note is talking of value shade? I think note number four. I will check the note five. Vera says note five, not four. I check note five. During the period, during the period, shilling 65 million in cash was spent on investment in asset share. So uh Cash, PS given in Ghana, not five. They acquired another other sheets and they paid 65. So that one also you will top up. That was additional information number five. So top it up. You know, so I could not see that there was a lot of unnecessary talks there. I uh, just need to be sure. Not for Lima. Yes, note four as an issue. Check note four. Check note four. They are saying Ukulima Group disposed of some of its shareholdings in Shamba Limited. Ukulima held 90%, 90% of the shares in Shamba Limited. In Shamba Limited, fine. Before disposal, no, 90% before disposal and 40% of the shares after disposal. 40% after disposal, leaving it with significant influence. Actually, only to dispose 50. So they remain with 40 after disposal. So this 40 after disposal, you know, 40 became an associate. This is a fresh associate. You know, initially, it was a subsidiary at a percentage of 90. Percentage was 90. They disposed of 50 and they were left, they were left with 40%. So that 40%, how much was the retention? Remember from Kagwangana, they retained the investment. So how much did we retain? So that is the only question. The fair value of the interest we retained in that company. I'm going to add it here. So you will add, because this is a fresh associate. Uh, retained interest, return interest 40% after disposal, after disposal. How much did we retain in that company? Because that is another associate. It is not from the ones we had. They disposed a subsidiary. So whatever remained in that company is an investment to them. How much should that be? No, should be may make one mention. Joy four. Anna, you may your lap. 32. Yes, it is 32. Check well that not. They retained 32 in that company. You know, it was an uh it was a subsidiary. Wakauza 50 kabaki 40. That 40 remained with an investment of how much? 32. So you have to top up. Push up you two. This is very new for me. I've never done a question of that nature. So how much should be the other shares? Top up, top up. Investing in us sometimes.
from people got to 21, then it increased to how much? At the end of the year? Two. Two or four. The decrease in investment in cash flow, we normally assume it is dividends. So, so, yeah. so the balancing figure is dividends received. Balancing figure. Decrease in investment in associate or joint venture is assumed to be dividends. So, decrease of how much? 17. 17. Correct. So, you bring it to the cash flow. You say dividends, dividends from associates working for that is 17. It's a plus because it's an inflow. So the next next item are non current assets. Mpaka non current asset division. That is when we are safe. Eh? So good non current assets. The next item. The next item and an non current assets. But before the end of the current asset, non current, he has to share part of the product manager's I have some issues. When I notify this cash they pay, you know, they pay 65 to acquire another associate. If you read not five, you have a not five key, the note number five. They say during the period, 65 million cash was spent to on investment in associate. So they acquired, there is additional associate which was acquired with that 65. You know, not that much. Purchase, purchase of associate, not five, 65. That one we have to subtract. I've yeah, just talked about it before we proceed to the next one. At the ground, so you can have a person uh, let's go to the next investment property. Investment property. number, not number. Investment property, not two. Uh, investment property. Sorry. The investment property, the next one. Okay, it's really made since what I've learned. There was a grant, grant received, grant received, grant they received a grant of how much? Three. That is a cash flow. You can add it there. Then we go to note three. We go to note three. We could leave account for investment property. Some new investment properties were acquired at 14 million. So purchase of investment properties, purchase of investment properties, 14 million, that is cash outflow. That is cash outflow. As I hear now, I to collect a bill. We disposed a subsidiary. So, no. I think that is the main working we have here, which can give us headache. I adjust the screen tower. This side. Just what? 
we disposed the subsidiary. How much did we receive when we disposed the subsidiary? Can you check for me? How much did we receive when we disposed the subsidiary? How much did we receive when we disposed the subsidiary? Hmm? How much? No, what they have given us is profits. But how much did we receive when we disposed the subsidiary? And they want they want us to suffer for no reason. How do I do that? Yeah, they because that one was before Kini in a Kwangum. Let's have work in five. So I'm adjusting the camera for working five, but it should just be there, somewhere there. There is no problem with that. So have working five. We need to know. Actually, that one should be our last item. Then we might use a little investing. Cash received. Net cash. I will tell you why I'm using the word net. Net cash, net cash received on disposal, on disposal of subsidiary. When we dispose the subsidiary, how much did we receive? That one is an investing income because subsidiary is an investment company. So you must know how much did you receive when you disposed it off? So we start. Can we start? Yes, we can start. We can start. We can start working five. Disposal of subsidiary. Disposal of subsidiary. Uh, so if you remember from our group accounting, how do we calculate gain or loss on disposal? This is how you start. You start with the cash proceeds. Cash proceeds. Now this is the question. Then you add, you add interest, the interest retained. Interest retained. They return 32. There was the interest which was retained in that company, this one, after this portal. They returned interest, they returned 32. That one we normally earn with the cash proceeds. Then you less, you less goodwill disposed, goodwill disposed. So on the day of disposal, we were told it was 40, I agree. It was 40. Also, the net assets is post. Net assets. Net assets is post. They dispose that one. Check the total net assets on the date of disposal, not number four. Somebody to tell me. Yes. 34. 34 is quite correct. That is very correct. Very much correct. So they dispose net assets of 32. 32. 32. That, that's about 30, 34. 34. So it means the total, we are talking of 74. But minority were also claiming, minority Pia or Meleta Jida, on a server, they are fair value. You less fair value of NCI. How much was the fair value of minority that day? Because they were share four. So minority was claiming four. So what you need to subtract is 70. So when you subtract the 70, you need to get a gain or loss. But the examiner said the gain. How much was the gain? So gain on disposal. How much? 
gain on disposal three. Yes. So they gave us gain of disposal of three. Note number four. Note four. There was a gain of three. So let's work backwards. So we want to work backwards to get the cash proceeds. So it means three, seven, here must be 73. So no, I am 73 minus 32. What can I count? 73 minus 32. How much? 41. Eh? 41. Balance is bigger. That is what they were not giving us. You will quite tricky. Please complete that before I proceed. So cash proceeds is 41, which they are not giving. They, are, they have decided to hide. It. But this question is good. We cannot even begin to come up with the fire. So now, so now, so now, so now, check, check here now. They received how much? 40, 41. But they also disposed to their cash. That is why the one net was quite good for me. They received 41, but check not four on those items which were disposed in not four. How much cash and cash equivalent did they sell? Well, if I 41, like you up here, cash here will end up. What's how much? How much cash and cash equivalent did they dispose? They dispose just one six. Six. So it means they received net of 35. One and six. In note four, those items, the items which were disposed in note four, there is cash they also gave out, cash and cash equivalent of six. So they received for one, I don't dispute, they received for one, but also they gave out six. So in next, they received 35. See, remember, later, we are done with everything. So this is going to be B. And this is cash flow. Cash flow from investing. Investing activities. I know you will forget about the six, where the six is coming from. You can write it somewhere. The six is the cash and cash equivalent they sold. So they received for one, but they gave out six. So the in net, they received 35. Investing in a restricted time. From there, we are going to move. Investing normally has a lot of issues. So give me the aggregate. Someone is getting how much? Negative. Yeah, negative 68. Thank you. 
68. Let's go to financing, which is the last one. Uh, let's go to finance. I think I want to do my exam. Other people, then, boom, because you are competing with time. Um, stress. stress. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to financing. Financing, go to equity and loans. Apple. Mm -hmm. So, to remove it for equity, let's go to equity. Equity, you are seeing share capital. Sure. Check, 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 check your equity. You keep your record busy. Kitchen the apple that work I use. Why not share capital? Share capital only 122 and 102. Whoever compressed this paper the mess. The 122 and 102. Do you retain learning sequence 64 okay. and 24? Other equity 59 at. So, yeah, so uh, share capital at the beginning it was 102. At the end of the year they are close to the 122. What do you think happened? What should be our narration here? Share capital was 102 when we started. At the end of share capital, like one and all, so we are just doing direct comparison. So, what do you think we should? Adjust. What should the narration? Shares has gone up. So increase in shares means they have issued. And you don't issue shares for free. So just what cash is still on issue of new ordinary. But use your narration. So cash, big up. Cash receive or just like cash on issue. On issue of new shares. Of new shares. So it is the 122. Minus 122 minus 102. Here you are. 20. So that is a plus. That is 20. That is 20. I go to the next item after share capital. After share capital, go to the next item. The next item, I think the remaining items for this one, I will have to do a working. The next ones, the one I will say, I will just go about it to avoid time wastage. So let's have a working. The next item is retained earnings. In cash flow, utilize retained earnings to determine dividends which was paid to the parent company, members of the parent company. So, so that is working. Five. Six. Six. Okay, five people. Oh, this one was here. This one here. This was working. Five. So let's check working six. Working six, retain earnings. In any cash flow, not this one only. In any cash flow, retain earnings account is reconciled to determine dividends paid to the members of the parent company. Dividends. Dividends.
So how much was the return earnings when we started the year? It was 24, right? Yeah, it was 24. So give us there, 24. When we started the year, the profit was 24. What about for the year? For the year, check P and L, profit stop loss account. You check profit attributable to the members of the parent. Not total comprehensive. Yeah, just for 43, I agree. Are you seeing 43 in the P and L? There is the profit attributable to equity holders of the parent. Are you seeing it? The equity holders of the parent. 43, check P and L. Down, go chini. But don't check the total comprehensive. You only go for the profit of the tax attributable to the equity holders of the parent company. So 43. That is 43, I agree. Then there was other components of equity, the transfer. You remember not one, I don't know who was talking about not one. There was a transfer was made within equity for excess depreciation of 1 million. You know, excess depreciation normally understands profit. Do you know when? Yeah. When you charge excess depreciation, profit is understated. So when there was a transfer due to excess depreciation, we add it to the profit. So excess depreciation was one. So you add it back to the total comprehensive. And therefore, there is nothing. Can you add this? Add that total. Have that total 68. Nancy, how much is the closing? Closing profits 60? 64. So the decrease, decrease in profit without communication is dividends. So balancing figure, dividends. Dividends to parents. How much? Four. But mostly, you must be looking at as a market entry with the excess depreciation. And I want to go down for the year and compare. And that is all. I don't know why the examiner wanted to make our life very difficult. So, I, so in your cash flow, bring dividends, bring their dividends, dividends paid. Dividends paid to holding company. So dividends, dividends paid to holding company, working six, four. That is cash outflow. That is cash outflow. What item came after return earnings? But then other components of equity, those are evaluation. Revolution, there is no cash flow. NCI. Alright, so the other item which is coming after return earnings is NCI. So how they're working for NCI. We also need to check dividends they were paid. With the leap apparent now watch a minority, what a collector problem. Well, they can bring me a lot of problems. Here that you know, but I say my own CC2 because we are a minority, but God is watching. <laughs> so working okay, seven, NCI. You have to take their interest, otherwise, you will not be in good books with them. Minority. Balance brought down. Balance brought down. For minority, balance brought down, I'm seeing 87. Check there. 87 at the start. 87. Then, remember, we disposed a subsidiary 
And also during the year, they, they were given some profit. So to them, you say share, share of total comprehensive, comprehensive income. Minority, you just check the total comprehensive. You know, return earnings, profit, you always let it comprehensive because of revaluation. But minorities, their equity, you bring the total comprehensive. So total comprehensive with Apochini for P and L. The controlling interest was 73. So that is a top up. <clears throat> hey, 73. 36, 73. Minority got 36. 36. Less interest disposed in not four. Remember the interest, the interest of the debt was total, which was four. No. The interest of minority was four. Naive the usual. They sold it. Full stop. So give me this figure. Huh? 109. 109. 119. 119. 119. Check the closing. Balance carried down. Minority balance carried down. I'm capable of seeing 104. So the decrease. Decrease in minority is also dividends. So dividends paid. Dividends paid. The balance in figure. How much? 15. So they were paid dividends of 15. That is why their equity went down. So dividends paid to. So dividends paid to noisemakers, NCI, working seven. 15. Equity is gone. Let's go to the loans. Then we are done. Let's check the loans. Let's check out the loans. Then we are done. But so when we go to the loans, actually loan the guy in the back. At the start of the year, loan was 152. You are as Loan was 152. Then they sold the subsidiary. Subsidiary went with a loan of uh, 30. So it was a 152 minus 30. 122. So the loan should be remaining 122. However, the examiner is saying the remaining loan at the end is 163. So they acquired more loan. They acquired more loan. So proceeds, you can call it whichever name. Proceeds from loan issue. 163 minus 122. Forty one. Forty one. I hope there is nothing. There was three. There was something three on loan. Could I could call a three on loan? Which note was that? There was something on loan. A, a certain note. I'm, I'm dreaming. No, there was. Grant. Yeah. Grant. Let's check. There was something on the loan. Uh, which note? I'm a baby at a foot. Note six, just what I'm saying, check note six. Vera note six, check note six straight. Note number six. So in note six, if you check note six, Note six, note six, note six. So let's do a working to make it more precise. Eh? Please let's do, that's the last working we are doing. 
So I can set eight loan loan balance brought down balance brought down for the loan was um, one fifty two. Disposed subsidiary, disposed subsidiary, subsidiary went away with uh, 30. Subsidiary went away with 30. Then not six. Finance costs include two million loss on translation of loan. So when we trans when we retranslated loan that was denominated in a foreign currency, we lost, we lost how much? Two. So the two should be subtracted, not, do we subtract or we add? Loss on uh, retranslation, we should, what? Huh? Are you sure? You know loan, we add. A good thing, yeah. Actually, we add it is the it is the reverse psychology and the reverse thinking. Reverse thinking, eh? See, loan me liability mm -hmm. when you lose, so still a liability on your side. Eh? So, so you add it as part of 152, yes. So you add, you add which name can we give it? Loss on retranslation, loss on. Retranslation. We lost how much? Two. You add it, we tell me your loss to subtract a partner. You know, loan is a liability. A loss on translation is also a liability on your side. So you combine the liabilities together. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. yeah, it makes sense. You should add. You can't subtract, you add. Because loss is also a liability on your side, loan is a liability. So you add the liabilities together. So that is 154 minus 30. 124. Then they closed with how much? They closed with 163. So these people acquired more loan fucking eggs. So loan acquisition, the increase, please. 39. So loan acquisition, 39. Squisha, we are done. I couldn't have to anything. Non-current liabilities are over because default tax we are done. So there's nothing remaining. We are done. Therefore, add for me. Add for me and call it C. Loan acquisition is positive. Loan acquisition is positive. So I want to talk for a reconciliation to see whether we are accurate or not. In exam, that is not your problem. You can't do what kind of students. What? I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the uh, financing totals. Vera uh, Mesema, 40, positive. Mm -hmm. Positive 40. So.
Good. So fourth, Masata. Musa mau kuli ya nak puja. Dia musa mau kuli ya nak tuaran. So I want to, before we go to the Yomsa Mokweli, we get the net cash flow. So right from the net cash. No, so this one, first of all, is cash flow. The cash flow from where? Financing. Financing activities. So the fourth is the cash flow from financing activities. Yeah. Uh, so down there, you write uh, cash and the cash equivalents cash and the cash equivalents during during the year A plus B plus C so give me the aggregate of the three. That is the cash cash equivalent during the year. Walimu is exam. In exam, can you show to do workings on the sides? I'll show you how workings are done. Just write after this. So cash and cash equivalents during the year. So add the three, A plus B plus C, then tell me how much. Huh? Okay. Positive, eh? Positive 152. One person to confirm the same. 152, Nancy has confirmed. So this is 152. Thank you. Then we bring cash and cash equivalents. Cash and cash equivalents. Equivalents. Brought down. Cash and cash equivalents brought down. So we'll bring it here. So when you add, brought down the down to the from here. So when you add the brought down plus this, you should be able to get cash and cash equivalents at the end, which is carried down. So maybe let me say that's our last working. So let's call it working nine cash and cash equivalents. Cash and cash equivalents. 2022, 2021. How is that way? Uh, so reported 
How much was reported under current assets? Go to current assets. There was cash and cash equivalence. Cash and cash equivalence. I'm seeing there. 103 and 42. 103 and 42. 103 and 42. Then there was bank overdraft. Bank OD. OD should reduce. Overdraft should reduce your cash equivalence. So go to current liabilities. Go to current liabilities. You will see the bank overdraft of 57. 57. So you subtract, and this is 148. So this is the current down. So can you give me the two figures? Give me the two figures. 46. The first one is? 46. 46. This one. How much is this? This one. This one is negative. So 46. 46. 106. Mm. I reckon 106. Negative. Negative. Sure. So that is the checkpoint. So if you take, now this is the cash and cash equivalent at the beginning. Yeah? So if you take 106 here, you want 152, it should give you this answer. If you are accurate, please come to check for me. It's it's done. Because how? So you bring here 106 negative, then you get how much? 46. So that is very accurate. Okay. Who pay the balance? Yeah, it was not a very good question. Now, two things. If you are tired, we are stopping now. Then this question, we will not repeat using a direct method. You know, this was indirect. Mm -hmm. What if the examiner would have said use direct method? So it's good to do and repeat with the, the other method. But, yes, but I cannot... I can't connect in the next class immediately to repeat this unless you direct method can maximum it can take me maximum should be 10 minutes because we, we are only repeating the operating activities investing and financing are the same so we don't repeat the two only this that should take us 10 minutes but if you are now tired then we can repeat in the other in the other question which we are going to do next so, but the chalk. I must have people late for chat. Watch a department sample around four people online. Do we repeat using the other question? Because we are meeting in the evening for three hours, which is even enough. So, to answer that question, that Elizabeth has left. <laughs> yeah. I think people should be going to chat. But Masi Asema, we, we just try to, to see the direct method. 10 minutes, see Mingi Sana. We just do. See, to to Jari. And the key out. All right. Kevin, can we adjust the meeting to 3 p.m. before KPLC? <laughs> Kevin, Kelvin, are you working for KPLC? You know what is next. Um, yeah. uh, let's repeat this beyond it because I'm still trying to the question. So, right for me there, repeat using direct method. Direct method. Yes, direct method. So, Kevin, the only problem. I'm having section three from two to five, from two to five, unless I take you from 5.30 up to around eight. And we'll be waiting for section three here up to five, uh, from two to five. All right, so repeat using direct methods, so direct method. 
direct method. So under direct method, you write there Ukulima, Ukulima group. Consolidated, consolidated statements of cash flows for the year ended for the year ended 30th September 2022. One column there. Operating activities, operating activities, operating activities, cash received from customers, cash paid, cash paid to employees and who? Suppliers. Suppliers. This is the cash generated, cash generated from operation. Then tax paid, tax paid is the same whichever approach. So tax paid was seven. Interest paid. Interest paid was 10. So A, A is the cash flow from operating activities. Cash flow from operating activities. Which this A, this A and this A should be the same. This one is very short. However, <laughs> it's not as short as you think. It can give you a lot of problems. Very problematic. But we shall overcome. Uh, we kick off. We are scared of any Pamaja. Pepsi. Pepsi. Alright, so let's kick off. So I'm working. Oh, be, okay. Before I proceed, I show you how to do work in the time. Let's finish this one first. So cash received from customers. Let's have a work in here. I'm at one minute. To determine cash received from customers, to determine cash received from customers, from customers, comma, reconcile trade receivables accounts. Reconcile trade receivables accounts as follows. Trade receivables account as follows. So to determine the cash received from customers, you go for receivables. So down there, trade receivables. Trade receivables accounts. Trade receivables accounts. Balance brought down. How much was our opening trade receivables balance? 
Uh -huh. Our trade receivables was 263. So this was 263. But I remember there was 32, which was to be subtracted. Which one was this? Did you go up here 32? There was something affecting the receivables. The one which was disposed. So less subsidiary. Less subsidiary. Subsidiary was disposed with 32. 32 in the end. Of it. You add credit sales. What were tax on eleven is an equivalent of these records. You add credit sales. Credit sales, we are going to assume revenue. So revenue is the credit sale here. We are going to assume the whole amount. So this is revenue. Revenue in total was 1423. So how much is the total? How much should it be? You know, the receivables is debtors. Receivables is debtors, yes. That was not four. Debtors, you add. You add credit sales to the debtors. So how much do you get when you take this final tax plus that one there? That one should be the closing debtors. Closing debtors balances. 1654 as per vero, confirm? 1654. How much is the closing as per the examiner? How much is the closing as per the examiner? The closing as per the examiner, receivables is 219. Okay. 219. Decrease. Decrease in receivables means you collected money from debtors. So the decrease is cash received. Cash received. BF, balance in figure of how much? 14. 14? 1435. Let us 1435. Cash inflow. See you Without problem. See you after what I'm going to need. Hi. I hope you're done with that. Now we want to check cash paid to employees and suppliers. So, right there, to determine cash paid to employees. To determine cash paid to employees, to determine cash paid to employees, to determine cash paid to employees, comma, add, add and adjust, add and adjust administrative and distribution costs. Administrative and distribution cost, add and adjust administrative and distribution costs. Those two, add. So do this. Uh, cash to employees. Cash to employees, cash to employees, uh, admin, you will bring the admin. Wait, wait. In this question, they called it operating expenses. So admin distribution, distribution. These two have been called operating, operating expenses. And they are given as one figure of uh, 150. Please check to confirm. They are given a one figure of 150. Correct. Then, uh, things like, you know, we are in, in consolidation, Depreciation in another cost of sales, impairment in a general administrative. But I want all, all this 
Ahora ya sé. Uh, mi prediction in pair loss on disposal, gain on profits, this one here. These two, this one, uh, two or three, this, this, and this, you can see them in PL. You can see them in PL, they are there, this and this. And this. These ones cannot be traced in PL. If you can't trace them, it means the beginning of organic or administrative and distribution and cost of sales. So that is the meaning. Because when you check PL, you cannot see this, this four. This four are not appearing there. If they are not appearing, it means they have been classified. So they are part of administrative distribution, cost of sales. So what we do, let's just subtract them from there. Because at the end of the day, cost of sales and admin distribution will go as one in the cash flow. So let's subtract. So you come here and say, you add back, you less. Less depreciation. I could have a depreciation. It's done as cash expense. 52. Yo, the top. Impairment. Impairment. 27. There is no money there. Loss on disposal. Loss on disposal. There is no money there. Two. Gain on investment properties. So, gain on investment properties. The gain was eight. So, gain you will add. Gain you add back to the cash inflow. So, can you adjust? That is the money, the cash which was paid to employees. That is the cash to employees. So cash to employees is how much? Seventy-seven. Okay. Seventy-seven. Mm. So this is seventy-seven. So you're the employees. So just hold it. You put there as one employees and suppliers. So we need to go to suppliers. We need to go to suppliers. So you say. To determine, that's the last one, to determine cash paid to suppliers, to determine cash paid to suppliers, to determine cash. I think I can get To determine cash paid to suppliers, reconcile trade payables. Reconcile trade payables account as follows. Trade payables account as follows. Trade payables. So payables we kick off? Yes. So balance brought down. Check balance brought down. Left subsidiary. Left subsidiary. Yeah. Then you add credit purchases. Credit purchases. Then you get the total. You compare with balance carried down. So balance in figure here is the cash paid. Yes. Of that. How? Oh. Right. So we start. Brought down payables from the balance sheet was 12. 486. This is 486. Then 
subsidiary method 65. Subsidiary method 65. Credit purchases means there you know what the other for cash flow. It's a working you're going to do. So leave this. Balance carried down. Check balance carried down. Payables 524. But we're going to get a PP. We're going to get a PP there was that too, the one for PPE. I don't know pay those, which was relating to property plan and equipment. So that one is a fact. So this one is 522. So what is holding us is the purchases. Once we have purchases, we get the total we compare, then we get that. So the one for purchases, I've never seen these people giving in any cash flow. They don't, the credit purchases. So we are going to use this formula. Post of, how do you get cost of sales in accounting? You take opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. And we are going to assume all purchases are on credit. So you can make P the subject of the formula. If you make P the subject, then it will be cost of sales minus opening inventory plus closing inventory. So no, this is the key under. Yes, so that's how you get the P. Everyone they can fit careful. Then we see. Oh, so cost of sales, how much is our cost of sales? Our cost of sales in the question was 1197. 1197 minus opening inventory. Opening inventory, where are you? Opening stock was 201 minus 201 plus closing stock 256. Subsidiary was not was not disposed to stock. If there was, you take opening minus. But there was no stock for that. So this one becomes your P. So give me the value of P. 1252. Can someone also confirm from online? Fellow fifty two, fellow fifty two, I've been confirmed. So let up fellow fifty two. Can you add 486 minus 55 plus 1252? 1683. Compare with the closing. Closing has decreased, so it means those people, we pay them, we pay those suppliers. Online, how much was paid? The balance in the figure? You know, I'm trying to regulate the speed. Online, how much do you get for the cash pay, the balance in the figure? 1161. So 1161 is the cash which was paid. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to our cash flow. We wrap it up. So here, Cash trade to employees and suppliers. Employees to be what I can 77. So you take 77 plus 11, 1161 plus 1161. What do you get?
Third of thirty eight. So third of thirty. Remember, this is cash paid, so you less. So fourteen thirty five minus twelve of thirty eight. To get this the cash generation from my one. One ninety. Fourteen thirty five minus the twelve of thirty eight. Uh, Nancy, 197. 197 minus 7 minus 10. 180. Are they the same? Yep. Correct. Uh -huh. So if the question is open, so investing and financing are the same. If the question is open, open means you would have to ask only what you're saying which method. So a student can use any method. Number one, the marks are quite the same. I advise to send it for a direct method. About a year. About that, you know, in a way, the worst part of it goes this way. Yeah? Now, uh, the marks you, you get from operating, come operating when I locate like seven marks, then easy peers and advance will play seven one. So, if you long keep a gap, you will protest a mean. So, if the question is silent, please go for indirect. Brian, in future, <laughs> timekeeper, the, the work for the name, who does my negative timekeeper? Timekeeper, the father name? Can get it. I am. So, Brian, you are keep, you have been duly appointed. You have been duly appointed to be the timekeeper. Okay. 